Hey guys, so last summer I made an author spotlight video about Mary Reynolds, who is or was my favorite writer of historical fiction set in antiquity. And today I thought I'd make a video about my second most favorite writer of historical fiction set in antiquity, and that would be Rosemary Sutcliffe. Rosemary Sutcliffe was born in 1920 in England and died in 1992 and she wrote a ton of children's fiction. I suppose in today's categories it would be classified as maybe young YA. It doesn't really feel like middle grade, so somewhere a mixture of old middle grade young YA, I'd say. The vast majority of her novels are set in Britain and most of them are set either in Roman Britain or in post-Roman Britain. And by post-Roman, I mean set shortly after the Roman era, not like Tudor England. At the heart of her work is a very loose series of books that is sometimes called the Dolphin Ring series because those books are all about members of the same Roman family who have a dolphin ring, a ring with a figure of a dolphin as their family heirloom and the dolphin as their family's emblem. And at the heart of that series is again a very loose series of three books, which were the first three books in that series. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, they are the first books that Rosemary Sutcliffe wrote. Number one is by far her most famous work, The Eagle of the Ninth. This is set in the first half of the second century at the time of the Emperor Hadrian. I'm going to talk more about this in a minute. Book number two is The Silver Branch. This is set at the end of the third century at the time of Carausius, who was declared emperor by the troops in Britain at the beginning of the time of Diocletian. And this is more or less a spy novel. It is about a pair of secret agents who uncover a plot against this Carausius. And the third book, The Lantern Bearers, is set in late antiquity. It starts at the point where Rome declares the province of Britannia lost and calls away its troops and leaves the island to the mercy of the Norman invaders. But the same Roman troops had been stationed in Britannia for centuries and the families of even of the soldiers who had at one point come from Italy or other regions of the Roman Empire had long since gone native. And some of the soldiers made the decision to desert and stay behind with their families and try to protect their families as best they could against the Norman invaders. Our protagonist is one of those soldiers and we follow him around as he tries to save his family and then to carve a life out for himself under the changed circumstances. I'd like to talk about and recommend two books by Rosemary Sutcliffe in particular, my two favorite books of hers. The first one I've already shown you, The Eagle of the Ninth. This is set at the time of the Emperor Hadrian and its protagonist is a young member of the nobility called Marcus Flavius Aquila. Marcus has sustained a wound in battle and is retired from service in the army and is now at a loss as to what to do with himself. So he makes a plan to save both his own honor because he feels like he has something to prove both to himself and to others now that he has been wounded and also to save the the honor of, of Rome as well. Fifteen years earlier, Marcus's father was the commander of the Ninth Legion Hispana, which under mysterious circumstances vanished in barbarian territory north of what would later become Hadrian's Wall. They vanished to the last man and including the Legion's eagle. Now losing a legion, i.e. losing a battle, is bad enough, but losing an eagle is a traumatic experience for the Romans. So Marcus figures he can save his own honor and his family's honor and Rome's honor all in one go by going on a secret mission to retrieve the eagle. He is all alone and in the company only of his slave, Eska, whom he frees. Eska, as a British slave, acts as a native guide, although he is not originally from the territory where they are going. Now, since this book was written, new evidence has come to light that suggests very strongly that the Ninth Legion was not in fact annihilated in Northern Britain, but was in fact at a somewhat later point in time regularly disbanded somewhere in the East. 
there are some people who still argue for the annihilation of the Knights Legion in Britain, and those are mostly English historians. Make of that what you will. Even so, this book is still a fantastic depiction of life in Roman Britain and society in Roman Britain. It is impeccably researched and full of details that really show how much Rosemary Sutcliffe knew about the subject matter. It is much better researched than the movie which came out. Was it 10 years ago, 8 years ago? That movie contains so many annoying mistakes, starting with the casting, and I don't mean Billy Elliot. I would strongly discourage you from watching the movie and encourage you to read the book. It really is fantastic and very emotional as well because of the, um, the relationship between the two main characters, the, the Roman soldier and his British freed slave. You can imagine that this is a somewhat tense relationship. And the second book that I'd like to talk about is my favorite book by Rosemary Sutcliffe, Frontier Wolf. This is set in the 4th century and is its protagonist is another member of the same family as Marcus Flavius Aquila, the protagonist of The Eagle of the Ninth. This one's called Alexios. At the beginning of this book, Alexios is the commander of a small army unit which is under attack and he makes a grave error of judgment, one that could have been avoided, he should have known better, and he loses his men. So after that he is then banished, or banishes himself almost as a punishment, to into the command of a small fort on the northern border. And of course, he has a hard time there. He not, not only is he far from everything and everyone that he knows, but his men and his, especially his second in command hate him because of that earlier blunder that caused the loss of so many lives. And in the course of this book, we then watch Alexios grow into this position, make friends among his own people and also cross the border among the Picts. And then we watch history repeat itself and Alexios finds himself in almost the exact same position that he was in earlier and has to make the exact same decision that he had to make earlier and that resulted in such a disaster. And the book then, the story then goes from there. The reason why I like this book best is hands down the characters. The relationship between the characters, the character development. I just love the protagonist Alexios and the ordeal that the author puts him through is heart wrenching to read, but also so exciting from a character arc point of view. But again, this is impeccably researched, full of details. It is an impressive depiction of life in the Roman army, especially life in a remote outpost. And it is the best depiction, it contains the best depiction of a Roman army unit on the move that I have ever read. And it is also just then nerve-wracking. It doesn't read like a children's book at all either, if you ask me. Less so than The Eagle of the Ninth, I would say. However, I would still recommend both of these, The Eagle of the Ninth and Frontier Wolf, to just about anybody who has any interest in historical fiction and or antiquity. These two books are hands down the best books set during the time of the Roman Empire that I have ever read and I'd recommend them and Rosemary Sutcliffe in general without reservation. Now go read. <laughs>